Hey y'all, it's Lens, and I just wanted to come chat with y'all a little bit more about my story. And I was just reading a scripture on here. I wanted to share it with y'all. It is Matthew chapter 10, verse 26 through 28. It says, Do not be afraid of them, for nothing is hidden that will not be revealed, and nothing is secret that will not be made known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the housetops. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Instead, fear the one who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. So I share that just as a basis and a foundation to talk about um, things that were done in the dark in my life that I know will be a blessing to myself and others to um, just shine a light on. So, Father, I just ask you to be here with me today. And I thank you for your presence, God, and I thank you for the courage and the boldness to talk about these hard things, God, and God, I just ask you for wisdom, and uh, I thank you for all that you are, God, and I thank you for the freedom that you want for us. In Jesus' name, amen. So, um, one of the things that I have struggled with for a long time, especially after encountering abuse, was my identity. I did not have a firm identity in Christ at all before abuse happened, but after abuse, I think it made it even harder for me to understand what that meant because the world was trying to hand me so many other identities in the middle of an identity crisis, honestly, because I don't know all the scientific things that happen with abuse and I don't know all the proper terms, but what I do know is, is God did not make us to be abused. And when you are abused, it can really do some damage to your soul, which is your mind, will, and emotions. And I completely lost a sense of who I was. There's a fly in here. What I like to do. Um, it just felt like all I was was abuse. It felt like my identity became abuse. I was the abused girl in my mind. And I started to live through that identity. Um, so therefore, I kept putting myself in situations where I was being abused. And didn't seem to know how to get out of that. I literally thought that was my purpose. I thought I was damaged goods. And I thought that if I could serve a purpose, it was to be used and objectified and that at least I was doing something you know at least I had a purpose in doing that I guess than nothing at all and some of this wasn't I wasn't aware of until after the fact but now that I've gained more understanding of what I walked through I can see it more clearly at the time I think I was just surviving by doing the next thing and um it felt like life was a blur almost. I don't think that I was able to just stop and, and really look at myself. I don't think I wanted to. And I think my natural response was the only way to deal with this is just to keep going. But I was carrying around things that were just stacking up, stacking up, stacking up. I was internalizing this abuse. And as you internalize something, it begins to pour out and come out of you. And internalizing abuse is a very scary thing. It's a very damaging thing. And that is definitely where eating disorder started to come into play with me. Um, It's hard to describe where you can go mentally to someone that hasn't experienced this, but when I say that it can become all-consuming, it can become all-consuming. I talked about in the other video about how when you've been abused, you can often draw up defenses and always find a reason to protect yourself from people because you're sort of reliving that abuse over and over again. Um, but... I mean, it can just bleed into the most mundane things, and you would think, how in the world did I get to this place in my mind? How in the world have I gotten to such a dark place where I, I just don't see the joy in life anymore? It just feels gloomy, and I just, you don't want to be there. 
And that is the truth of where I got. I got very depressed and very anxious because it, things just felt hopeless. But that was also because I felt like I could never share or be free from what, what, what happened to me. I felt like I had to just sit with it. And it's been very liberating to realize, no, I don't. And I've gained a lot of hope and encouragement through other people that have so boldly and openly shared their stories. And I kept asking myself, well, why not me? And I think I started to ask others, like, is it wrong for me to share about this? Is it, you know, other people that share their stories, whether it's been abuse or, or whatever they walk through, they're very transparent and it involves other people. And, and they're talking about their 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 journey very unashamed and I wanted that because I'm like they're free they're free they're talking about it they're outside of it but I'm not I'm sitting here carrying it around still and battling it because I feel like it's stuck in here and if you've been the victim of abuse it was never your responsibility to carry that it's not your fault no matter what you've been told um I've went through so many questions in my mind, you know, why is this my fault? Is God punishing me? I was told why it was my fault or what I should have done different so it didn't happen. Um, and I just honestly didn't understand. And I was trying to figure out what was wrong with me for that to happen. Why? Why? Out of anybody, why was I abused? What, there's got to be something wrong with me for this to have happened. So I started to try to fix myself, change myself. Do anything to keep myself from being abused again. So I assumed that whatever, I, whoever I was, I needed to get away from whoever I was. And it, it became an internal battle with myself. I didn't love myself. And when you're waking up with yourself every day in a war with who you are... And, and not wanting to take care of yourself or love yourself. In fact, you're trying to fight against you to be something else. It's very detrimental because it just creates wear and tear. You're tired. You're not enjoying life. And it is depressing to wake up to because you're like, oh, here I am again. I have to live with me again. What's wrong with me? You know, is God punishing me? Why have, why have all these things happened? And I just want to say here now, no, God is not punishing, punishing you uh, with the abuse that you have walked through. God does not put that on you. And I don't understand why all things happen, but I do know we live in a broken world and people have choices. And if we don't surrender to Christ and let Him flow through our life and, and help us change, like we're capable of doing some some very sinful dark things um so people have free will and choices we have to be aware of that and we can't shift the blame to god because god is our helper god is our provider god is the one that we need more than anything if we have gone through pain struggles abuse whatever it may be which we all have in some way shape or form because we've been in this world and this world is not perfect by any means but God is. And so he's who we cling to when when we need help. And a lot of times, though, the devil twists things and tries to get us bitter, mad, angry, blaming God, running very far away from God because he knows that God is the answer. So if he can get us mad at God, then he can keep us from being healed and being whole. Um you are not doing anything good for yourself if you are hiding um, the truth. God is truth. And um, the truth about my story has been something that I have for many reasons felt just not allowed to, to expose. But mainly because, like we talked about in that scripture at the beginning, I've been more afraid of people than I, I have fearing the Lord. And that's just being honest and vulnerable. Like, I had to be real with myself. And I've asked God lately, 
multiple times, God, I just, I want to have a real fear of you. And that doesn't mean that I'm scared of him, but it means that I honor and respect what he thinks more than I do anybody else. And I want to please him more than I do anybody else. So, um, I just wanted to come share this morning. I'm trying to allow myself permission to come share what I want to share and stop being so rigid about that and having to be perfect about it or having to be the most uh, knowledge-filled person about all these things to talk about it. Um, I woke up this morning after just beginning to start to share more details about my story feeling very wrong. That was the feeling. Felt I just it's like I I was felt like I was battling an actual heaviness physically to get up, and that has been something I battled for a long time. And it does have to do with all the baggage that I've been carrying around, uh, and the devil trying to keep me in it. You're wrong for sharing this. You're wrong for sharing this. You know you need to sit back down and and be silenced. And in those moments, you you want to stay there because it's it's heavy and it doesn't feel good and you. And you feel like you have to fight to not stay there. But it's worth it. Whether you have to start praising God. Uh, start speaking the truth of the word of God. Like, no, I'm not wrong. I've been made right through Christ. And um, we are clothed in the righteousness of Christ. And we give our life to him. So we are able to know that that is where we are seated as Christians. I've been made right by Christ. And... God does not see me as wrong anymore. So if the devil's trying to shame me and tell me I'm wrong for doing this, I go back to that truth. No, I'm not wrong. Like he said in the scripture, like all, all things will be exposed. And God is all about the light, not about the dark. And the Bible says that um, the darkness has not overcome the light. So in order for that to be true in your life, um, that may mean that you have to speak up and not not allow it to stay in the dark anymore. I mean, sometimes there's things that we don't want to do, but God can't just just do it for you and make it all disappear. You have to you have to put your big girl panties on or your big boy drawers on. If that's how you want to say it, and and take the necessary steps to becoming free. I'm gonna tell you what. I can't imagine I'm not the only person that has had trouble sharing their story or their testimony. Um, whether it's been fear of how people are going to respond. I mean, there's been legitimate... I mean, I have had legitimate fears with this. I mean, it has caused real anxiety for me. What might happen? Uh, you know, will someone try to come and... I don't know. Like, how will people respond to this? But I have to, again, go back to the Word of God... And he tells us to fear not, that he is with us, and he won't leave us in any of these things, and just trust him that he's with us, and that there's grace here to share, and um, he, he's got me covered in that. So, I, um, I just want to come tell someone today that just because something wrong has been done to you, it doesn't mean that you are wrong, and that doesn't mean that we're perfect people it doesn't mean that we're not being sanctified by Christ and it doesn't mean that we don't need to work on some things and, and grow and change but you are not wrong that is not your identity that's not who you are um, just because something wrong has been done to you so today is the day to stop identifying through abuse if you've been abused your identity is not the abused man or woman, the abused boy or girl. You get to be a child of God. And you get to live in the fullness of that, which means peace, hope, joy, righteousness in Christ, love. Um, all that all that he is. <laughs> you could go on and on, but those are just some right there. Uh, faith. And one of, the, one of the big ones is just having hope. Because when you've walked through traumatic things that you that seem to follow you around, because I'm going to tell you, trauma will follow you around and stay with you until you deal with it. And not everyone wants to take time out of your day-to-day -day life to deal with trauma. You just want it to all go away. But that's just not how it works. And um, 
I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> Layla Grace is back here playing with yarn. But, oh yes, hope. It can get tiring sometimes. You feel like, am I ever going to see the light at the end of the tunnel? Um, but hold on to hope. Hope is an anchor. And hope is Christ. So just know that no matter how long the journey's been for you, or how long you've held it in, or no matter what you've done, it seems like you can't get on the other side of it, um, don't give up. Don't give up. The only way that you can lose is if you quit. So keep going, keep fighting the good fight of faith. That's what I'm doing right here, right now. And I'm not giving up hope. I know that I'm going to be healed and whole of all these things. And I already am, but in just a greater way. And I believe that for you too. Unknown caller. And I'm getting a phone call. So y'all have a blessed day. And I'll catch y'all back here soon with some more good stuff. Love y'all.